It may not seem like it to the average user, but not all Wi-Fi devices are created equal. Over the years, as consumer devices have improved, so has Wi-Fi capabilities. Improvements in electronics and the introduction of new standards and protocols have increased the performance and bandwidth of Wi-Fi devices. The two Wi-Fi bandwidths that you may have come across is 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz, but why do we see these two in our routers and when should you use each one? Well, let's take a look at what 2.5 GHz and 5 GHz mean for the average user, how these two frequency bands are different from each other and what spectrum works for your needs. In the end, we'll also discuss slightly the new 6 GHz band that was introduced with the new Wi-Fi 6E standard. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Sabrin we love to make and talk tech, so if that's what you're into, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with more videos like this one. Wi-Fi is basically a family of wireless network standards that allow devices to connect with each other wirelessly. From routers to laptops to smartphones, they all use Wi-Fi to transmit data wirelessly. Wi-Fi at its basic core is just radio waves transmitting data at a relatively short range. The two most commonly used radio spectrums for Wi-Fi are 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. So what do these numbers mean? 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz basically denotes the frequency of these radio waves. GHz is a unit of frequency and is equivalent to 1 billion Hz. A single Hz means just one cycle per second, so 1 GHz is 1 billion cycles per second. The major differences between 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and 5 GHz Wi-Fi boils down to basically two things range and bandwidth. 2.4 GHz band offers a greater range. It isn't as easily absorbed by the environment, so you can connect your devices further away from the router or connected Wi-Fi devices. The 5 GHz band on the other hand provides a greater bandwidth, but at a much shorter range. The 2.4 GHz band uses longer waves, so these waves are ideal for carrying data across longer distances and through solid objects. While the physics behind the long and short waves gets pretty complicated, simply speaking, longer waves with lower frequency pass through materials more easily. The higher the gigahertz, the less distance the Wi-Fi can travel. So the 2.4 gigahertz band offers a higher range at the cost of slower speeds. And the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi routers can offer greater speeds, but at the cost of a shorter distance. Under ideal conditions, a 2.5 gigahertz Wi-Fi router can support speeds of around 450, maybe to 600 megabits per second, while a 5 gigahertz router will support speeds of around 1300 megabits per second. The thing to keep in mind is that the actual speed of your internet will depend on your ISP and the bandwidth package that you have subscribed to. The speeds mentioned are possible speeds on certain types of routers. Another thing to keep in mind when looking at these two frequencies is potential interference. Interference is when radio waves from another source start tangling with the Wi-Fi waves. This can deteriorate the connection and slow down the network significantly. For example, take the 2.4 GHz band. The two most obvious sources for wireless network interference for this band comes from things like cordless home phones or microwave ovens. So if these operate near a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi router, you can expect a lower signal integrity. Similar things like radars, uh, digital satellites, and various security sensors work on the 5 GHz band. This can cause interference with a 5 GHz router. But generally speaking, the 5 GHz spectrum is less saturated in the home as compared to the 2.4 GHz band. So a 5 GHz Wi-Fi router will do comparison relatively well in a crowded space with electronic applications and appliances. Dual band routers transmit data with both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz frequency, so your device can connect to the frequency of its choice. A lot of routers nowadays do have this dual capability and have these smart switching capabilities, allowing your device to use the right band for the situation. The important thing to remember is that your laptop, smartphone, or another smart device can only connect to one frequency at a time 
for the most part. You should also consider that some devices only work with the 2.4 gigahertz signal, like many smart home devices, meaning that you will have to specifically connect to that signal in order for those devices to work. If you are looking for the fastest possible speeds and you are in relatively close proximity to the router, then connecting to a 5 gigahertz signal will give you the best experience. Now, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz signals aren't the only frequency bands supported by Wi-Fi now. The latest Wi-Fi 6E standard has added a 6 gigahertz frequency to the list of available bands for Wi-Fi. The benefit of adding this new band includes an increase in network performance and a reduction in network congestion. Since 6 GHz is a brand new band to Wi-Fi, devices communicating via the 6 GHz band won't in face interference like devices using 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. The 6 GHz band also offers better overall performance because it supports 60 channels that can be 160 MHz wide, thus allowing for more data to pass through the air. In contrast, the 2.4 GHz band only allows for 11 channels that each can only be 20 MHz wide. So 6 GHz has more bandwidth capacity as compared to the other two bands. Choosing between 2.4 and 5 GHz totally depends on your needs. If range and coverage is your concern, then 2.4 GHz will suit you best. This is because 2.4 GHz can travel further and through objects like walls. 5 GHz on the other hand has a hard time crossing through thicker walls and other objects. The only downside to using 2.4 GHz is the potential for higher interference and lower bandwidth. What frequency works for you is entirely dependent on your situation and needs. However, with many, many routers offering dual band capabilities and with Wi-Fi 6E coming to those routers on top of that, Basically, with the smart switching capabilities, all that you have to do is just select your network and let the router do the job for you. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. If you found this video helpful, then make sure to smash that like button and also hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.